Wow! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Oh, that was a brilliant reaction, wasn't it? I don't think anybody could quite believe what they were seeing. And I know, Mac, are you going to mention it? Yes, I was wearing my flip-flops. I was just comfy, comfy shoes. That's OK. Comfy while you're watching the football, right? I... <laughs> comfy for some. Who's been filming over there? <laughs> Who's filmed over there and got your flip-flops on? <laughs> I know, I know. But look, Rio, can you quite believe what we've just seen? Because I don't think after Mbappe scored, anyone saw Paris Saint-Germain just losing it in the fashion that they did? Or did you see it? But I don't think anybody, well, us three sitting here aren't surprised. I mean, this isn't something that's a surprise for us because we've seen this time and time again in the knockout stages of the Champions League. That this Paris Saint-Germain, Paris Saint-Germain team pressed the soft shot button. They managed to do it. Two of the goals today are preventable. There are two goals where they're overplaying. The goalkeeper starts it. Um, Nerves? Mentality? That's what a mentality. It? I think it's a culture maybe at the club that... He overplays, they get punished. Benzema uh, uh, sweeps up and scores. Even, even the goal um, from the kickoff, Marquinhos gets back in there, gets his foot, it, tries to pass it in his box when they're under pressure. But straight to Benzema, a goal. But this isn't something that is new at Paris Saint Germain. They've got fantastic talent, world class talent all over that pitch. Internationals, left, right, and centre. They could field 22 internationals. But when the mentality is not right on the day and you get into situations like this, sometimes you've got to stay in the game. It's like a boxing match. Sometimes you've got to roll with the punches a little bit, stay in the game. You've got wily old characters in your team. You've got enough experience there to do that. They never, ever managed to be able to do that. And it's not just about now. This has happened with previous managers. So it's part of the ingrained culture that's there at Paris Saint-Germain. The the players are too powerful. They were too powerful under Thomas Tuchel, too powerful under Unai Emery, too powerful under this man. They can't get told off. And when the going gets tough, they do not care. And the trigger point was Donnarumma. Yes, it was a bad mistake, but that should have been the point where they, the team then say, right, mm. the crowds have switched. The crowds have switched. The attitude in the, in the, in the stadium has, has switched. We need to dig in. We need to defend deep. And we need just to stay in this game until we quieten the crowd down again. And they don't. They just play wherever they want to play. The top three up front are amazing footballers, but they don't work hard. They Why do not the work hard when the goal gets tough. How do you that, mate? They're, they're cruising he at that point. Donnaroo, I think Donnarum was unbelievable. I think he's one of the best in the world, no question. But you're away from home, you're 2 nil up. Cruising. cruising. You simply don't need to give anybody any excuse to get back into the game. And as soon as they concede that, all of a sudden there's a total belief. Early in the second half, the fans think, he thinks... The whole mood changes, and and that is so pre- preventable. Look at the forwards here trying to get back. They're not interested. I'm just wondering not, at this you... stage: is it all of those memories of the previous exits? Do they yeah. start yeah. coming yeah. into oh, their oh, mind? Yeah. open again, hundred percent. Yeah. But uh, but then you, you you've then it is difficult. That's the thing. What a pass! You know, the second goal, the third goal, they they are difficult to prevent in many ways because they've got ahead of steam. You can't give them a chance. This is an unbelievable. I mean, Modric here, the creativity, the vision. Everything about it. Just on side, wasn't he, Benzema? Does take a deflection, but it's all about this little bit of an assist. Disguise oh, in it. He's beautiful. onside. Unbelievable. It's unreal. Vinicius, I think you've got to look, he's onside quite easily there, but let's look at that. Through the legs of Kimpembe. It's like no one in the in the studio, let alone in the stadium or at home saw where that when that pass was coming. Brilliant vision. But Vinicius, you've got to give special mention to him. Although he didn't finish his chances that he, he created. He was a thorn in this yeah. this Paris Saint-Germain side. His pace, his willingness to run in behind, doing the hard yards, getting this is this is a joke. This for a team of this experience, give it away here. Ten and a half seconds from kickoff, but you you get an opportunity here, Marquinhos, who I love as a, as a centre half. He's one of the players that you you don't all normally aim any criticism at <laughs> because of the way that he. He, he defends, but you look at this, you get a chance, just launched out of the stadium, yeah. give away a corner even. It's, it's unbelievable, they you can't believe play, it. continue to play, didn't he, Paris Saint-Germain, and make mistakes in the second half. Constantly, constantly. I don't know whether it's a, an arrogance thinking, oh, we'll be OK, we'll just keep on playing and get back into the game. But you have to give Real Madrid a huge amount of credit, because even when they're down, they stay in the game. Yeah. They keep it tight, they keep plugging away, and they wait for the opportunity and with that number nine that they have up front, a chance will always fall. From, I mean, yeah. he missed chance in the first half. We focused on it at half-time. Then he goes and gets a hat-trick in the second half. I mean, just absolutely incredible. I mean, is it now, are we looking at a team who have the experience and their experience shone through in Real Madrid tonight? I think so. We've seen Real Madrid haven't been at the top of the game for a few years yet. But a few years. But even when they, they won it a few years ago, you know, two or three times mm. um, in succession... 
And even then, I didn't think they were the best team about, but that experience of the, the, the club have got, that, that know-how, that belief when you go into a stadium. That last finish, by the way, was just incredible. On the run like that, Benzema, laces, mm. you know, he wasn't planning to finish it. He was actually taken off anyway and the ball just came to him. It was just a sudden instinctive finish because it just flowed with his, with his pattern, his stride pattern at the time. Out, oh, I mean, it was <laughs> just unbelievable. Here we go again. I mean, I could see it loads of times, but it was such a good fit right in the corner as well. You know, to beat a guy as size of Donnarumma, he couldn't get near it. Do, unbelievable. Do, do, you know, do you know what it's what? Like? <laughs> Look you remember in the background. <laughs> I love it with a chair. <laughs> with a chair. If, if, you, if you take it back to before the game, I remember the VT of Modric speaking, and he was... he was, You could see his demeanour was about, we expect mm. to win this. We're not this game, we expect to win this tournament. That is the ask of a Real Madrid player. No matter what you think of our squad or our team at the moment, no Cristiano Ronaldo, etc. maybe you don't think we're as good as the other teams in this tournament. We here in our dressing room expect to win this and that the club expect to, to get another Champions League and you saw them, the minute they got back in that game that the whole just changed the whole dynamic in that whole place changed and you could see the confidence evaporate in the PSG but why players. can't PSG shut it down they why can't managers because they don't have to win their league do you put and it take on the manager in though? their league do you put that on the manager um, not particularly with this team hmm. because the manager has no power over this team he has no power over the front three. I'm sorry to say, I love them. I think they're amazing. But they have no power over them. He hasn't got any power over Verratti, Marquinhos. Because we've seen managers come and go and they cannot sort this out. So yeah. it's just... That's why it's such a short-term fix going to PSG. You go, you get knocked out of the Champions League early, you get sacked, you move on. And you go on to bigger and better things like Thomas Tuchel's done. You, we know how good he is as a manager because he's shown us... But he, no one can do it with this team mm. until they change the personnel. They can have one or two up there, but they can't have four or five who don't fancy it when the going gets tough. No but, chance. Yeah, I think the most damning thing when you look at it from PSG's point of view, we're sitting here first half going crazy, going, wow, this is like, they're just taking, they're cruising. They've just got their, playing in second, third gear and still cruising. They, this could be three or four. But it's in their DNA to capitulate like this because we've seen it year in, year out in the knockout phases. So when you wouldn't have been want to be at the club when, you, when people say, this ain't a surprise, that mm -hmm. type of situation. We're, draw, we're drawing breath here. We're, we're gasping at the, the way it's unfolded. You wouldn't want to be in that change room yeah. like that. It's and hard to take. Considering the superstars they have, it seems crazy to even say this. I just wonder, going back to our conversation in the build-up to the show, what happens to Pochettino now? Because this is the one he needed to win. Yeah, I mean, what happens to the rest of them, really? You know, I, to be honest, I don't think he will mind. I think he's probably got his eyes set mm. on, the, on a Premier League team anyway. But he was out of work. It's an unbelievable job to try to, to do something like that. I mean, he's going to win the league probably. Um, but, you know, he, he will go the same way as, as uh, all the rest. Like Mac has said before, the Thomas Tuchel's of this world. If a big job comes up in England, I'm sure he's got his fingerprints all over it. Meanwhile, in Madrid, it's Paris Saint-Germain that have the advantage. They've scored the one goal on the night. They're 2-0 up on aggregate. And, Mo, we pointed out Kylian Mbappe, didn't we, in our pre-show, and he's the one that's made the difference again. Yeah, it didn't take a genius to work out, did it, that he was going to be the thorn in, in Real Madrid's side. And Madrid started quite well, but um, we also said that it could be a counter-attack at night for, for Paris Saint-Germain. I actually think against the big teams, this could be a real potent weapon to hit them on the counter-attack with this man. I mean, Rio will talk about the defensive side, but me and Maka were, were just saying, you know, he, he's only got that side to hit, really, because of where the defender stands. So, if he just hits it, I mean, the goalkeeper will read him, so he opens his body out as if to, he's going to go into that far corner and almost disguises it, makes Courtois think he's going into that, and then he, last, last second, whips it into that near post, gives him the eyes, so to speak. Oh, Alipa has done all he could there as a defender. He's shown him the line and said, right, I'll race you down the line. You're only going to go that way. You can't go outside me. If you come inside, Militao's recovering to get in there. And the goalkeeper's got to kind of read where the defender's body position is, and I don't think he does that. He takes a step as well to his left-hand side, which actually opens the goal up even further. So, for me, Courtois has been excellent this season yeah. for Real Madrid. I think today he'd look at himself yeah, after and go, mm, I could have done better. I think so. I think he's a goalkeeper. I mean, you know, Mbappe's brilliant, of course he is. He's been excellent tonight. He's had a number of chances, but as Rio said, Alaba's done well. He's slowed him down. He's shut that, end, that part of the goal off. So he can't bend it around him because he's blocking it. The only shot he could take is that whipped inside the near post. 
and goalkeepers should be getting that at and this it, level. At this I, level, I think Ancelotti would be disappointed because that is the main way that you were, we, we all said before the game that they could score a goal. Mbappe on the counter attack, the way that they played, and they've done it at home a couple of times. Phenomenal on the counter attack, devastating today. Mm. Are we watching the best player in the world right now, Rio? In cool. Mbappe. Lewandowski has something to say about that after his hat-trick yesterday and his goal record in the last few years. But he's devastating. He's, oh, he, he excites me more than anyone at the we moment. We certainly yeah. think he's the heir apparent, don't we, to yeah. you know, the, the, the superstars of the past. In the last couple of years, even at Monaco, he was you could see he was going to be a star. But since he's gone to Paris, everybody's talked about Ronaldo and Messi, Ronaldo and Messi. But then it was his name was just underneath the surface, more so than, than Neymar. It was him and he's kept on delivering. He's yeah. been their main man this year. Other people might get numbers of him, like, you know, score more goals than him. There's no one on this planet that's more devastating than him. There's no one that would keep a centre half awake at night thinking, I've got a market like Mbappe. He's and the it, most scary prospect in the world right there's now. There's no one that will make you squirm and scream <laughs> in your seat like this guy. He's a joke. Oh, um, he's great. Like he's what? great. Squirm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, he is the man that's made the difference.